Hi everyone, it's Amanda. Today I'm gonna to create a shape pour and I'm doing a heart. This is a little six by six canvas and to get that perfect heart shape, all I did was buy cookie cutters off Amazon of different sizes and just lay it directly on the canvas and use a pencil and trace the inside of the heart. So that is pretty simple. Um, I'm gonna be using purple and magenta. And I'm also gonna add some pearl copper in there. But the first thing that I do is I use apple barrel white. My mixture ratios of water and flow troll and paint are listed in the description below. The white that I use um, is thinner, so I have a different ratio of water and flow troll that I use for the white than for the colors that I use. So I start out, I use these small little bottles. Um, I get them off of, or I get them at the Dollar Tree and they give me a little more control when I'm laying out um, my design. So I'm just gonna trace just right on the outside of the line. When you're doing a shape pour, you wanna make sure that your canvas is nice and level so that your design doesn't start to slide off the edge of one side of the canvas. The white outline that I do just kind of allows me to keep the colors contained inside of the heart. Um, I'm gonna bring this widow's, this little widow's peak down just a little bit. I often have to kind of add more white into it after I've blown it out just so it's more defined. The first color I'm gonna use is a Liquitex Dioxazine Purple. I like to use the darkest color that I have to trace the outline of the shape that I'm using. It helps to define the contour of the shape better after you blow it out. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of, as I lay my colors, I'm gonna separate them with a line of the pearl copper gold. Sometimes when I blow out my shapes or my paints, the, the metallic color that I want kind of disappears. There are little touches of it here and there. I always hope that it stays, that it retains on the shape, but sometimes I lose a lot of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and alternate. I'm gonna do the lighter color next. This is a Liquitex Medium Magenta. I added um, some Artist Loft Titanium White to this. So it's a little bit lighter. I'm gonna lay another layer of the pearl copper gold. And then the next color I'm gonna use, I had to look up how to say this. It is called, um, it's Liquitex. It is called Kiana Gridone, Kiana Gridone Magenta. I'm gonna do another layer of the pearl copper gold. I'm gonna try to do a thinner layer because the last layer was kind of thick. When this gets blown out, the little, the layers that you see, that's not what you're gonna see whenever I blow it out. It kind of does its own thing. I'm gonna go back to the Liquitex Dioxazine Purple. And then more pearl copper gold. <laughs> Trust me, this this metallic color is not gonna be very prominent when I blow it out. Okay, the next color, I'm gonna go back to the medium magenta. And another layer of the copper gold. It is okay if you start to get um, less symmetry as you get into the center. It's not gonna matter. The Kianidone, Kianagridone Magenta. And then a little bit more of the pearl copper gold. And then I'm gonna put a 
dash of the deep purple in the center. Okay, once I have the colors that I want on my heart, I am going to flood the remaining canvas with more apple barrel white. And I wanna make sure that it flows over the edge and covers all the edges and the corners as well. I've started putting dates on the bottles that are holding the mixed paint that I make because I have so many scrapes and I have so many old bottles of paint. I don't know how long it lasts. So this way I know for sure when it was made. Now I'm gonna get a craft stick and I'm just gonna push the paint over the edge. Make sure the edges are all covered and the corners get covered. When I do my shape pours, I completely cover the shape pretty much with the white paint. I'm gonna add a little tiny line of white outside of the heart. All right, um, I always use my little go-to flower travel blow dryer by Drew Barrymore. So I'm gonna start by putting it on the low setting and I'm gonna start just blowing the paint from the outside over the edges of the heart. I take this little diffuser off the end. I'm gonna place it directly over the center and turn it on high to kind of uh, disperse that paint from the center. Then I put the diffuser back on and I just start in the center and I just kind of blow to the edges and go all the way around the canvas. I go ahead and set it on high. Now, this is my, um, waiting game just to see if my shape will start to emerge. Um, it takes about 10 minutes. I let it sit for about 10 minutes and let those cells that surround the heart to start pop, to pop up and then the heart shape itself will get more defined. So I'm going to pause you and when I come back you'll see that the shape has changed and it's more heart-like. So I've given it about 10 minutes, and I'm pretty happy with the way the heart shape emerged. Um, there are some pieces I'm gonna go in, some sections I'm gonna go in and, and um, add a little bit of white. Like right here, it's a little too full, so I'm gonna fill that line in a little bit. I'm gonna add some white dots here and here, and I'm gonna make it exactly how I want it to look. And the way I do that, is I've got these little condiment cups because I'm gonna squeeze some apple barrel white in here. And then I have this little acrylic rod and I'm gonna use this to dip in and just dab on little dots of white. And when I first put them in there, they'll look like a little white blob, like circle, but they will start to kind of blend into the surrounding cells. So <clears throat> I'm gonna start first by kind of adding white to areas of color that are a little too prominent. Sorry if I'm sniffing. <laughs> I've got um, allergy problems. It's been giving me headaches this past week and I'm just Okay. I think I need a little more here. Here. Okay, let me go ahead and work on this side real quick. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of lay out the white to give my heart that perfect shape that I want. And then I can add little dabs of white to fill in those spaces of color.
And I think I'm going to bring that widow's peak down just a little bit more. Oops. Oh. Now on here, it looks like the paint is a little too squished in this way. So I'm just going to take, I have these silicone straws that I use and I'm just going to take this straw and I'm just going to kind of blow the paint this way. So it gives me more of the shape that I want. Okay. I think I'm going to blow that up a little bit. It's almost exactly how I want it. But I think I need to fix down here so it's a little more centered on the bottom of the heart. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and add my little swirls that I like to add. I'm trying not to over swirl it. I'm trying to see if I have any surrounding cells that are that are lacking um, like a puddle of white because I will need that excess paint when I use my embossing tool and I drag that white into the heart. So if I see any surrounding cells that look like they have a divot and they kind of dip down, I will add a little more white to, just to that cell so that it gives me a little more paint to work with when I do my swirls. I think it's pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna start with the embossing tool that I have that has a little bit thicker ball at the end. This works really, really well because it doesn't catch on the roughness of the canvas when I do my swirls, so it's perfect. And I have them in different sizes. I have them in larger sizes. The balls at the end are larger. Um, then I have two sets. This is a little bit smaller than the one I'm getting ready to use. And it has two ends, a little bit larger ball and a little bit smaller ball. And these are even more um, defined. They're even tinier. So I'll start with the big one first. And I need a paper towel because whenever I do drag it, I always wipe off the end before I do another drag. So I'll start with some little bit larger swirls. <clears throat> Sometimes I don't make the swirls go all the way around. All right, so I think I'm, and then I'm gonna pull a couple of these out. I like to always pull them out to the corners. So I start in the color section and I just drag out to the edges. Okay, I'm gonna take my smaller embossing tool and I'm just gonna add a couple of small minute um, swirls or little swoops. I like to kind of work around the edge to kind of um, soften up any of these big blotchy cells that I have. And sometimes it gives it a really cool little design. I'll add, switch, switch it over and go to the finer 
point and work on adding some tiny little swirls here and there. Now here, there's a big blob, so I'm going to kind of break that up a little bit. I think I am done with this one. Um, I really like the way the colors turned out. I think they're really pretty. And I don't think I went too crazy on this world. So I wanted to go ahead and take you in for a close up to see the detail in this little painting.